Hello, today I'm going to look at creating this little Pewtercast name tag, or, or initial tag anyway, um, and my idea of this is that we could have a little uh, lobster claw attached to the hole at the end here, and we could just loop that or connect that to, let's say, the, the zip tag on a pencil case. Um, I've made this using some card molds, here they are. There's two parts to this card mold. I've had to make this backing piece here because I, for my D I've got this internal uh, cut out to apply. If I was doing a letter like a J or a T, I wouldn't have this issue. I could just simply cut out the profile of the letter here. But for the D, I need to know where to place this little internal cutout in alignment to the rest of the mold so that I can create the D shape. Um, and to do that, I've had to laser engrave just the pattern onto a separate piece of card here. Bit of PVA glue, stick that down on there, leave it for a few minutes and then that will then create my mold. I've got my well and my runner here where I'm going to pour the pewter in from our low temperature casting machine and I've got some um, some risers here for the for the air trapped in the mold to escape as the as the pewter pours in. Okay so that's what I'm going to make. Oh and sorry as here as well there's a little engraving here into the backing piece of card and that's so that I will see where to drill the hole so it's aligned neatly with the rest of the pewter. Um, I don't actually have um, a little uh, an element like of card here to make the hole. I actually drill that afterwards. Um, so when I cast this, that will actually be filled. So let's go ahead and have a look at how I'm going to make this. So we're in 2D design, and as usual, I'm going to go to grid lock, and I'm going to right click on grid lock, and I'm going to set the grid spacing here to five millimeters, and I want to have lines in pale blue. I just find that so much easier to work with rather than the black dots. Okay, we're going to come to the ABC tool. I'm going to click on the screen on the grid. Let's come to settings, and I'm going to go with uh, Bookman old style. Um, I'm going to go with bold because I want to have quite thick letters here, so it's a nice sturdy design. And I'm going to have a height here of 25 millimeters. Um, okay, let's just confirm that and confirm. Oh, I need to put my letter in there, so I'm going to go in with D for design, and there's my D. Um, so if I just come back to the camera here, no, it's not going to let me, there we are. So if I just spin this around, you can see here that this character is 10, 20, about 25, in fact it's exactly 25 millimeter, millimeters in height. And then the little dome I've added on here where I'm going to add in the little loop for the lobster claw. So what I want to do now is add in this little dome element. Back to 2D design and let's just zoom in so we can see more clearly what's going on. Now at the moment this is a text object. If I select it and go to properties I can edit the settings of this font and I can also of course change it from a D to any other letter or string of letters that I want. But I want to convert this into a graphic so let's go to edit and I'm going to make it make path from it. So make path function combines text objects into one path. Okay, so properties may be lost. You'll see what happens. Oh, well, there we are. Look, it says text will become a sequence of lines and curves. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, let's now go to start edit and see what we got. We have. And now, rather than having the font options, now we can see that my 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 D has been converted into a series, like a, a complex polyline. Okay, right. Let's have a look now at how I'm going to add this little loop on top. So, well, first of all, I think I'm going to select this, go to fill, and I'm going to say no fill. Now I can just see the outline of the letters. And what I want to do is try and insert this loop over the top. Now then, let's just come to step lock. And I'm wanting to make it so that this little loop that comes over the top will align with these two vertical edges. So let's now just come to a polyline tool goes to my extended desktop. Here we go. I'll drag this menu over here. You don't have to, but uh, you'll see that when I click it goes to the left, not to the right. So I'm going to go with a polyline tool and I want to just see where this snaps in. So with a, my one millimeter step block spacing, I can see that this, <coughs> excuse me, um, is actually not snapping onto this onto this line. I'm not very happy with that, so I'm going to come to step block again, and I'm going to put this step spacing down to 0 0.5 in the x-axis. And now I find that actually that aligns perfectly, and over here it's not bad as well. So basically what I want to do here, you know, I want to have some kind of right-click there, left-click, left-click, right-click. I want to have some kind of design that kind of fits in here. So let's just come to my dimension line tool. Let's check out this dimension. 
this is six millimeters. So I want to have a semicircle in here. Okay, let's come to my circle tool. Circle with a given center and radius. I'm going to go with a three millimeter radius, six millimeter diameter circle. And I want to drop it right there so that it intersects on the edges with these lines I've just identified. Okay, looking nice. So now basically, you know, this line here is intersecting with the edge of the circle and is pretty much in line with that vertical bar of the of the D. Okay, now I want to have a little cutout in here. So for this, I'm going to come back to the circle tool and I think what I want to have here is a 1.5 millimeter diameter hole and that's going to go there. So that's now looking quite good. I just need to tidy this up a little bit now. <coughs> and again, I'm really suffering with this cold. Excuse me. Let's just come to delete. Let's delete that line and that line. I might just leave those dimension lines in there. No, I'm not going to bother. Um, let's clean this up. So I'm actually going to now apply the blue lines to this. Now at this point, I could simply, you know, select these lines and I could make them blue. But instead, I'm going to use the contour tool. I actually want to, let me think about this now. I don't want to cut this out. I simply want to just contour the outline here. Um, and I want to obviously contour around the top here. So let's come to my contour tool. Zero millimeter contour spacing. This is going to be in blue for cut, for the laser cutter. I'll click on the inside first because I want to cut that first. And then I click on the outside and it's going to contour around that semicircle. So now what I've got, if I just come to grid lock here, select the outer and the inner contour, so shift select there, I can see that I've now got that design. That's exactly what I want to um, pewter cast. Okay, let's bring it back there. However, there's one other thing I need to do here. I need to make it so that I've got a little dark engraving here, which is going to highlight where I want to drill my hole. So in that particular case, what I'm going to do is uh, just pull this to the side. Uh, let's just get another circle. I'm going to have this with a one millimeter radius, perhaps in black. Oh, and of course, I need to turn the step lock on here so I can access this correctly. And then let's look at another tool here. Let's come to the bounding fill. And in this particular case, I'm going to change the fill color to black. And I want to fill this larger circle, but I want an island. I want to have it so that this inner circle is not filled. No more islands, and I get this nice little black ring. And I can engrave that onto the, the card at the back. It's going to be engraved into here, just there, so that so that I have this little indent on my pewter casting um, and I know where to drill the hole. And if I come back to step uh, grid lock, sorry, and select this, it should just snap back into the right place. So that's now looking quite good. Let's go back out to media and see what we have to do now. So these bits of card here, they're actually, if I just place it on the grid here, they're actually 70 millimeters in width and 100 millimeters in height. So I need to recreate those right now in 2D design. <coughs> Dear me. Right, here we go. So gridlock is on again. Let's come to the top left here. So this is going to be 70 by 100. I'm looking down here at the relative grid references, which at the moment is blank. But when I move my mouse back onto the drawing area, you can see numbers appear. So I want that to be 70 in the X and minus 100 here in the why? Because I'm going from the top left down to the bottom right. And let's do another one over here. 70 in the X, minus 100 in the, in the uh, Y direction. Now let's pick this up. I think I'm going to copy it and paste it actually. And I'm going to put my pasted element up here because I always like to have like the original left and touched. It's always a nice idea I find. So let's now zoom in on this and see what I'm going to do in more detail detail. Let's have a see. I'm going to duplicate this again and I'm going to bring it over and drop it here and it needs to be, this is very important, it needs to be in exactly the same place. So I can see I've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four squares to the left there and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four squares down below and everything lines up perfectly. So this is going to be my cutout um, and that is actually looking good. That's perfect. I'll leave it as, as it is. Um, I don't technically need the engraved little loop there actually. So what I can do here is get rid of that. Can I select it? Mm -hmm. Zoom in. Now I can select it. 
technically, come on, that's a double click there. Technically, I don't need that. I mean, that wasn't mission critical, but oh, there you go. Um, and over here, this wants to be in red. So let's select this and select this, and let's make sure that those lines are red and not blue. Remember that behind here, I've just got black lines, no cutting. And as I say, this is going to be for this element right here. Okay, let's just bring that back in again. Um, almost there. I just need to put in my well and my runner. So I'm going to make that disappear again. So here's my, my well, my runner, and I've got my risers here as well. Um, and I'm going to change the grid settings yet again at this point. So I'm going to go to my... No, I'll leave it as it is and you'll see what happens. Ah, there's something else I need to do as well. I'm going to select both. I'm going to select this. And I feel as if if I cast it at the moment, it's not going to really flow around the design <coughs> Sorry, particularly well. I'm going to come back to this again to show you what I mean. Look, I've rotated my D here because I feel as if the pewter will flow better if I pour it in from the top and then it will kind of, you know, flow around the curvature of the D um, into all the little tails here. So that's what I want to try and emulate. Okay, so I'm going to turn on now radial lock and I'm going to use radial lock to spin this through 4590 and select all this and spin that through 4590. Now, because they are both positioned perfectly on the grid using grid lock and I've, scaled, I've rotated them both 90 degrees with radial lock, they should still be aligned. And to prove the point, look, I can drag that over there and that does align with the other one. So this idea of alignment is super important. Right. Let's just now put the well in. I'm going to come to my polyline tool again here. Okay, so here it is. Make sure you get the polyline tool. Um, this wants to be in blue. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start to draw. Let's come about here, start to draw a little well here. So something like that. Let's come up along. And then now I feel as if this grid is too coarse. I want to find a grid. But I find that right click on step lock, this grid is too fine. So I'm going to put this 2.5 and I'm going to bring this into here along and then bring it back out to perhaps... Mm. No, I'm not convinced by that actually. I'm going to undo that. Let's do that again. Sorry, I'm going to come uh, 15 mil or 3 squares in there along, along, up, along and let's see I want to come down I think yeah that's better straight down like this then in maybe that would have been enough I'll come along a little bit there I'll come up to about there no that's too much okay no maybe I can keep with step lock then maybe I can let's just see what happens let's come to there come to there along maybe I come down to here yeah into there out to there and up to there. I think that's the way to do it. What I'm trying to get here is a relatively wide open uh, runner there. So I get plenty of pewter flowing down and then it will just pass through this little opening into the D. I think that's going to be okay. Let's just come back to the point line tool again and now I want to have some risers. And for the laser cutter we have red as a light engrave, we have green as a heavy engrave, which, um, which is going to let a little bit more air escape. So I'm just going to put in um, a riser there and I'm going to put in a riser for the air to escape there and it's important that they don't go anywhere near the well or the runner so I think we're pretty much there um, I'm going to go ahead um, oh <laughs> silly me I need to remember as well that these two rectangular moles also need to be in blue there you go so I'm going to hold the video there. I'm going to go ahead, um, save that. I'm going to laser cut it. We'll come back. We'll see how they look. Okay, so job's done. And uh, this is what's... <coughs> me. This is what's come out of the laser cutter. I hope I'm not killing your ears with all this coughing and spluttering. So let's just shift these up. That goes up to there. This comes up. That's what we've got. Um, let's just remove the well and the runner. Let's also just remove there the details. So we've got the cavity of the D. And then I need to make it so that I'm going to be just gluing this in place, like so. In fact, I think I might do that right now. Okay, so I've got my glue here. Just put a little blob of glue on here. Come on, little blob, that's all I want. Okay, that looks quite nice. Spread it around a bit so it doesn't smear. 
Got to wipe that on my overalls. There you go, you didn't see that. Let's pop that in. Okay, that looks great. Don't know if you can hear people in the background there. I've got lots of people working in the workshop today at the same time. Right, so um, that looks good. I'm going to leave that for a few minutes to set. It doesn't have to set solid. And then that will be placed on top like that. And that's going to be ready for me to go ahead and, uh, and, and pewter cast. So I'm going to go ahead. Here's my glue. Uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pewter cast that right now. And then we'll come back and see how this looks. You know, it, it occurred to me it might be a good idea to actually show you what I'm doing in terms of setting up the, uh, the mold here to cast. So let me just explain what's going on. <laughs> um, here's... Uh, Here's the the piece of card I just laser cut. Um, this is a, a backing plate I've used previously. You can see the burn marks. Um, it's amazing to think that card can be used for, for casting pewter at temperatures of 230 degrees Celsius, but um, because it cools down so quickly, um, it actually works very, very well. So I'm going to place this on top, as we said before, and then I'm going to place this on top again. Um, there's actually quite a few marks on this side, so um, I'm going to go with this slightly burnt side, but it looks like where the pewter casting is going to be, it's not so bad. This burning here can actually uh, stain the pewter if you're not careful. I'm going to place that on. I'm going to align it all carefully. Here you can see where the one on the run is going to be. Um, I've got some bulldog clips here, so let's just place a bulldog clip at the bottom. Fold that up. Okay. And then I'm going to come to the side which has got the 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 well there. I'll leave it for the time being. And then the side with the well I'm going to flip this across. And what that means now is that effectively I've got this in a position now where I can slide it into the pewter casting machine, pull the pewter in here, and then slide it out and uh and my hands are kept safe. Of course I'm gonna be wearing gloves um heat proof gloves at the same time. So that's looking like it's ready. I can't show you the actual pewter casting process. I haven't quite got the kit to show you that, but I will come back with the casting finished and open up and see what we have. So I've just finished pewter casting um, and here's the mold now with the bulldog clips and um, <coughs> me again and the pewter inside you can perhaps just see the pewter inside here and it's leaked a bit outside as well and look i've got this lovely pewter just kind of trickling down the side there the bulldog clips we don't really want that to happen of course but sometimes it does we can't help it so i'm going to try and peel that away i need to get some pliers and just try and pull that off there anyway let's try and open this up and see what we have this has been about 10 minutes by the way you can feel it's still quite hot there, but it's not so hot that it's a problem to touch. Now if I pull this off, there we go, there's my there's my D. You can see that's pretty much an exact copy. It has actually kind of leaked out a little bit here, um, and I need to remove this. To do that, I should be able to just peel off this back section. But what I'm trying to do when I do this is I'm trying to keep it in this piece of card. Okay. And there's even more noise in the background now behind me, so I don't know whether you can hear that at all. Okay, now I've got some wet and dry here, and I'm doing this quite close to my computer, which is a bit daft. I really want to make sure that I'm doing this away from the computer. Oh, and I've also realized as well, look, there's the little marking for my hole. So actually, before I go any further, I'm going to just drill the hole. So I'm going to pause the video again, and I'll come back with a hole drilled, hopefully, in exactly the right place. Okay, so there's the hole I've just drilled. That looks like it's pretty much in the right place from what I can see. And I'm going to clean this up. So, as I say, not the best thing to do this near a computer. So definitely do this in a workshop away from your computer. But just for the video, I'm going to do it here. And I'm also thinking as well about cutting off the, the sprue here. Now, I've got to point out at this stage, if you wanted to laser engrave something on to the D here, I would keep it in this mold. That's a different story, but well, anyway, I'm going to try and take this out, I guess, or at least try and remove this sprue. Because I'm thinking if I could kind of hold this like this, you know, and kind of rub it. 
but what's happening? Is that abrading it? It's kind of, but it's also abrading all those around the outside. No, I think I'm going to have to pull it out. Come on, let's pull it out, for goodness sake. So here we go. In fact, I'm probably going to have to just destroy completely the card mold. So this is a one-use mold. Anyway, there you go. Can I punch that out there? There you go. Just use those thin those pliers to push it out. Uh, now I'm just going to clean this up. So I'll just cut that off with some side cutters. There, that's better. That's easier for me to manage now. And then now, with this wet and dry paper, on on the on the workbench here, you can see that's removing mostly just the card. You can see it's still removing some of the card there. And I'm just trying to clean down to that final finish. So I'm just going to shake this in a bin. And at this point, it might be a good idea for me to wear gloves. So I'm not actually... Oh, that's even better. I'm kind of just pressing down on top there, which is quite nice. Hmm. How's that going? So it's going to take a little bit more abrading there to clean that up. Okay, so I'm going to keep on working this design. I've also got to clean up this edge here. Okay, just try and work all this. What I might try and consider doing here is perhaps getting some abrasive paper that's a little bit more coarse. I'm not quite sure how coarse this abrasive paper is. Let's have a look. It doesn't say on the back here. Basically, the lower the number, the more coarse it is. Yes, yeah, so there's a little bit of a bump there, just where the sprue was. I've just got to work that through there. You can still see the little bit of a bump just on the edge there. Okay, well what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video again. I'm going to work this for 10 or 15 minutes and I'll come back and see what we have. Okay, see you in a second. Okay, so that's taken me about 10 minutes and I've actually ended up working with two, um, two types of glass paper or, or, or two levels of coarseness. So I've got a more coarse glass abrasive paper here and then a less coarse here. This is actually called wet and dry paper because you can work this, uh, you can use this when it's slightly wet and actually, actually polishes even better. But anyway, so there's my product and I've tried here to create a really nice kind of polished finish and you might be able to see some light kind of just about reflecting off that surface there. To try and clean up some of the edges I also used a needle file and this is a half round needle file so if I could try and show you here, this side is flat and this side is slightly curved so that's allowed me to hold this in a vise and then basically work this inner profile of the D using the half round profile and using the flat surface to perhaps try and do some of these flatter edges where for example here the you know the wet and dry would be able to let me get into those edges so there we are that is my D looking rather cool I'm really happy with that that is finished that's the end of this video tutorial. I still have to add on a little loop and a lobster claw here to attach onto uh, my, my pencil case, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I hope you found that useful. 23 minutes in. Hope it's not too long. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.